this time on Araceli Love. You know what? I don't see the point if nobody is able to connect with me because I see things differently. That I'm becoming a mother. To throw down, just so you know, just love and Patrice in the building. And we're um, meeting up with Hope. I thought Hope and him was riding together, but I guess they came separate. I don't know. That's it. You know what I'm saying? I got work in the morning. I got to work at 4 o'clock in the morning. So, And we lose an hour today. We lose an hour. So. 2 o'clock will be 3 o'clock. means I get one hour less sleep. So... Let's see how this night goes. We're gonna go and do soundtrack and all that other good stuff. Okay, so we're here setting up. Let's hope. Aww, I'm your cute little. Yeah. <laughs> I love that little camera. <laughs> I mean, video camera. Yeah. Those art pieces, y'all. That is nice. Nice. My name is Sharonda Scott, and this is my line, Royal Culture. Um, there's original artwork here as well. There's t-shirts for men and for women. Um, it's a little bit ethnic, a little bit urban, and um, everything is original artwork. We just launched. If you want to check us out, the website is SharondaScott.com, or my Instagram is The Sheep Next Door. Okay. Enjoyed the House of Bezalel event. Um, everybody. Oh, sorry. <laughs> everybody. It wasn't just an art mixer. It was an art mixer with Holy Spirit in it. Yeah. Cool. It was good. And I see you rocking one of the t shirts. Yep. <clears throat> the girl that made this, she gave me a word of encouragement that night, too. Like, at the end of the event, she, like, ministered to me and she spoke into my life and. Yeah, man, I was very, very teary-eyed at the end of the event. Mm. Yeah. What'd she say? Can you um, share? <clears throat> she was basically saying some of what I experienced, and she was like, God wants to use it to reach a certain type of people. And um, she was encouraging me to, like, not allow the rejection of people to discourage me from doing what God placed on my heart. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that was good. Yeah. Rejection can really keep you from doing what God has called you to do. Like, I'm learning that more and more, like, recently. Mm -hmm. Like, just what rejection feels like and... Not a good feeling. It's not. It's really not. Nope. And I, I think, for me, like, if I didn't really have people around me that knew God, and also, if I didn't know God personally, I would have allowed this to deter me. I would have probably been like, you know what? I don't see the point if nobody is able to connect with me because I see things differently. And some people might not understand and you how I come across. Yeah. yeah. So um, she was like, you know what? You're unique. Don't change for anyone. Mm -hmm. So, and I was actually questioning God the day before. I was like, why doesn't anyone understand the way I convey certain things? Mm -hmm. I don't understand. You get it. Yeah. But <laughs> other people But I'm don't. your best friend. Yeah, so other people don't understand. So she was like, you know, just stay the way you are. 
I agree. I agree. I mean, you weird. I know. But that's all right. <laughs> all weird, too. That's fine. Let's be weird together. <laughs> How have you been doing? Hanging in there. So, like, you want to share, like, that process that you're going through? I think so. All right. This is where I leave and let you talk. <laughs> no, no, don't leave me. <laughs> so I'm in the process of becoming a foster parent um, of a nine-year-old. And this process has been going on since last year. Um, I've, I haven't shared with um, anyone out of my, out, like, inner circles. So it's just uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. You know, some people will take it as oh, this is such a nice thing you're doing. And it's like, no, like, no, this is, no, this is not something that I'm doing for accolades or for a pat in the back. This is something that we're called to do. We're called to help the homeless. We're called to help the fatherless. We are called to help the widows. We're called to allow people into our homes so that we may cater to them, so that we may serve them and minister to them. That's what we're called to do. This is not something that's, you know, extra, you know? This is not something that, um, is extra holy or super holy no this is this is like the bare minimum of what we're called to do you never know what your ministry is it's not necessarily on a stage you know in front of in front of a pulpit you know in front of the congregation traveling the world doing missions your ministry might be in your very own home and i'm going into this being a foster mom i'm going into this with zero experience of being a mother and that's tough because a foster child is nothing like, not, I'm gonna say nothing, but they they're pretty different than your than your biological children. They've gone through stuff, they've gone through trauma, they've gone through crisis, they've gone through abandonment, rejection, and it's just having to now backtrack. You know, it's now having to make them feel safe with you. It's now having them to, um, getting them to open up because foster children have so many layers. They are onions. They're just walking onions. And you have to peel every single layer off. Because, one, they don't want to be, initially they don't want to be there. And two, they're seeing how much you can take. They want to know what they have to do to be kicked out of your house. Mm -hmm. Because that's what they're used to. And they want to know if you're tough enough to handle them. They're used to people saying, no, I don't want to deal with They're this. used to people saying, I don't believe we're a good fit. They need to leave my house. Mm -hmm. So this particular child, I met him last year, and that whole story is a testimony in itself. Um, but basically, I wanted to be, like, when I met him, when I first met him, I had a feeling like I'm going to be his foster mom. So ever since then, I've been fighting for him. And it's a long process. It's a court process. And things have not exactly gone the way I hoped for or that I planned for. And sometimes I fear that, well, I know that all things work together for the good of those, you know? I know that. So I know that God is in the midst of it. But before, I was like, am I causing more pain? you know, in this process.